sports day arrives at last the exams were over there was relief on the faces of all the children but preoccupation was writ large on the faces of the teachers after all they had the tedious task of corrections that loomed ahead piles of papers were on every desk in the staff room and in every cupboard and locker The annual sports day had been intentionally planned for just after the exams so that the children could release all the stress of the preceding weeks marked with pure academic onslaught. The junior teachers were all given duties to assist the sports teachers in the conduct of all the various events which included both indoor as well as outdoor games. When the selection of teams had taken place a month earlier, Anna had decided to attend the events and cheer for her friends. She was quite thrilled to learn from Mr. Philip that there were indoor games planned as well. She happily volunteered her name to participate in the games of chess and carrom board. Since the indoor events were planned on a day prior to the actual sports day, she was happy to be able to play as well as cheer for her friends. She entered the door of the indoor badminton court which was being used for the scheduled events of the day. There was a motley crowd of people there. One end had a table tennis table laid out while another corner had parallel bars where gymnastics was to be conducted. Closer to the entrance the two corners were taken for people playing carrom board and chess. Anna looked around and spotting Lena near the carrom board she headed there. Teams had been formed and they needed to confirm their names were on the list as well as find out who their opponent was. Lena found herself pitted against Susan, a small and bespectacled girl with wiry hair from class 7B. She seemed tiny, Lena thought. How strong would her strikes be? Anna eagerly searched the list. Ah, oh, there was her name, and she was to play against Gina from class 6C. Gina was a big built, stocky girl with freckles on her face and a large hairband that kept her straight, short hair from obscuring her vision. She looked like a strong opponent. This was going to be exciting. Before she could head the chess table and find out the same relevant details at that corner, it was time to get started. As luck would have it, she found that the first round was between Lena and Susan. She decided to stay and support her best friend and check on the other table later. Lena was stronger than Susan and had very steady hands. It was easy to see that not much cheering was needed as far as Lena was concerned. She was clearly a justified favorite. Intense concentration and focus on the striker and queen from all who watched had really charged the atmosphere. Every time a coin went into the net, there was a round of clapping, but the entire focus seemed to be on who would get the evasive queen. Anna decided to get some fresh air as the intensity of the game and the constant sound of the striker had given her a headache. Plus, the court was not very well ventilated. She was about to go out for a breather when she heard her name called at the chess table. She wheeled herself across and saw Christina, her opponent from 7C. She was a tall and lanky girl who wore thick glasses. over large brown limpid eyes her curly hair was tied up in two braids and she looked like a true nerd anna smiled at her pleasantly forcing all thoughts of the headache that was building up out of her head if she wanted to play a decent game against the girl who came across as studious and brainy she would need all her wits about her the girls shook hands and got down to business Christina was to start and she moved her pawn. Anna countered the move. Gradually the game intensified and the concentration was total. Anna moved her knight and claimed her first victim, one of Christina's pawns. The move was reciprocated 
as the girls dodged each other with their visions narrowing down to the object next on their hit list christina left an opening and anna was quite to see the chance her bishop flew across the board and claimed the be spectacled girls queen after this major blow christina lost her nerve and it was just a matter of time before anna won the game Christina was in tears as she was confident at the outset that she would outwit her opponent. She took the loss rather badly and left the hall in a huff. Anna had no intention of hurting anyone. It was just a game and the best player won. Oh yes, she certainly felt good about winning, but was not able to enjoy her win as much as she would have wanted to. Before she could recover from this event, it was time to play carrom. She put all thoughts of Christina behind her and decided to focus on her next opponent. Lena had won her match and was now eagerly cheering for her best friend. Anna's headache was completely forgotten as she now got ready to hit the striker. Tak tak tak, the striker moved across the board. Gina was a strong opponent. both physically and mentally she skillfully guided the coins into the nets and seemed to have had a lot of practice at it anna put up a worthy fight but about 10 minutes into the game she lost the queen to gina and that was a game clincher anna lost to gina much to the disappointment of lena anna congratulated the winner and asked lena to cheer up as she did win the game of chess You win some and lose some, so that's okay," she said. Since Lena had not enrolled for a chess match, the girls headed out of the venue. The girls grabbed something to eat at the cafeteria and quickly went to check the schedule of events lined up for the next day. David was to take part in the boys' events and Lena was taking part in the athletics events. The notice board had the schedule put up while declared the events would commence at 9 a.m. the next morning. They decided to meet at the grounds the next day and parted company, each happy with their own little victories for the day. Anna awoke to a bright and sunny morning. She had a quick bite before Giri drove her to the school again. She could have chosen to stay in at home and lounge about, but her friends were very dear to her. and she was looking forward to them winning some of the events she reached the sports ground and saw lena all ready and raring to go the tracks were well marked out with chalk powder and little flags representing the colors of the various houses fluttered in the morning breeze the participants were dressed in white t-shirts and skirts or shorts in the colors of the houses they represented yellow blue green and red were the four houses Lena and Anna were from the green house while David was from the red. They did not stop the friends from cheering for each other. The sports teacher Father Frederick was dressed in all white and was easy to spot with his whistle around his neck and a notepad in his hand. The girls waved at each other as the team geared up for the 100 meter race for girls. Father Frederick blew his whistle and the girls literally flew. There was a ribbon stretched across at a distance of 100 meters which was held by two assistant office boys. Anna cheered for Lena clapping and calling out her name as loud as she could and the cheering helped. Lena was the first girl to pull away the ribbon as she reached the finishing line. Anna bounced up and down in her wheelchair with excitement. The next event was a 100 meter race for boys. They spotted David and cheered wildly for him. David grinned at them as he came second. He soon joined them as Lena and he both rehydrated themselves before the next event. The 400 meter race for girls was announced and this time David joined Anna in cheering for Lena. The excitement was tremendous, but Lena was exhausted and could not push herself towards the end. She came third. David on the other hand proved more resilient and finished his race in first place. Well, they both had won a position in both races, which was cause enough to celebrate reasoned Anna. It was soon time for the 800 meter relay race and there was loud cheering all around. 
It was thrilling because the results were delightful. Green House finished first in the event for girls and the Red House got the second position amongst the boys having finished a little behind Blue House. After a short lunch break, the games continued. David participated in the volleyball match which his team won. They did not win the basketball match but he excelled in discus throw. So he was quite happy. Lena's team won their basketball match. She also stood second in long jump, so all in all it had been a very fruitful day for the friends. There was much back slapping and good cheer as the kids made their way to the cafeteria for some refreshments. Once they had had their juice and sandwiches, it was time to say goodbye and head back home. The school was now officially closed for the next 4 weeks and would reopen thereafter with the results being declared and the new session commencing. Although the day's events had been very thrilling, the thought of all the friends not meeting for almost a month was not very pleasant for any of the children. Yes, they looked forward to going home for a nice long break and getting pampered by their parents and relatives. But they would miss each other. With a heavy heart, Anna said goodbye to her dear friends as they promised to catch up with all their holiday stories of escapades and travels once they got back. Anna reached home around at 5:30 p.m. Her mother was waiting for her as it had been a rather long day. When asked how the day had been, Anna replied in just 3 words: "Exciting and exhausting."